they only have one manager now, right? And that's Paul Hammond. Or what? I think yeah, I think he's the only one yeah. up there. Yeah. Did you work with when you? I guess Paulie Dangerously or whatever, whatever he was known as before. In 1979, 1980 or something, he was just he hanged around the wrestlers. He was a bag man. Here, carry my bag for me. <laughs> no, but uh, Grand Wizard knew him real well. You know, he was the bag guy. He'd bring you whatever you needed. And then he evolved into a, what, you know, he created ECW. Guy's got a good brain on him, you know, really good. Yeah. I didn't like ECW, though. I didn't like that hardcore crap. I did a dog collar match, but that's, you know, then after that, it, you know, I'm back to regular wrestling. But they had thumbtacks, and they had, barbed wire matches, they had just any crazy thing. They had gimmick matches where you know, they tell the crowd to bring bring your own uh, hammer or yeah. something. Weapons. Where, bring your own weapons and throw it to the guys in the ring to use. Crazy stuff, you know. I didn't like that. I thought it was bad for wrestling. You know, I didn't like it. I know Terry Funk went there and did some crazy stuff because he, he became crazy later on, but that was his gimmick. And he fit in with that, but uh, I didn't think it was good. Just to wrap on Paul Heyman, like you said, he's one of their only, pretty much their only manager and mouthpiece now up there, but I mean, you like what you've seen from him over the years? Yeah, he's very intelligent, very smart guy. Like I said, I, me I remember meeting him when just a young kid, and he's done an exceptional job, and he... He looks the part, and he is the part. He's done, he's done great. He's a genius. He really is. And for Vince, for him going against Vince with ECW, and then they bring him in, they, you know, Vince is smart. He must have saw how smart uh, Paulie Dangerously, Paul Heyman. I forgot about that Paulie Dangerously. Saw how smart he is, you know. Real innovator, yeah. Instead of letting you let him have, have him compete against you, you just bring him in and exactly put him under a contract. But that's that's what he did with Eric Bischoff. He brought him in for a while. You know, it's all smart. Vince is smartest guy there. Smartest guy out there. I didn't know this. In the mid '90s, you wrestled a no ropes barbed wire death match in Japan, in Big Japan versus Kendo Nagasaki. Yeah. I never realized that you had uh, done anything like that. I mean, I well, I, you know, I, this guy passed away too is uh, Chris Adams. Good, good guy. Good, real good wrestler. He got me booked in Japan because I was coming into Texas a lot, working in independence there. And, and, uh, and I was working for Jimmy Crockett too. He had Dallas going for a while. And so I said, yeah, I'll go over there. So he had tell me, this didn't, I was, it was a, probably just a week long tour or something. But this was at the end of it where I wrestled in a barbed wire. And I go, wait a minute, I don't do these kind of matches. This is not, you know, this is not me. And he goes, well, 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 we got it advertised. And how about if you put a shirt on? So I put a, like a dress white shirt or something and went out and did it that way. I don't like those kind of gimmick matches, and I got, I got some cuts on me, but you know I made it through. Yeah, I didn't like that, but I made it through. It was crazy, but they were doing a anything to try to to draw. I think he did pretty well, but you know, barbed wire match. As long as I had a shirt on, I didn't care. But it was weird because there was no, there was no ropes. It's just barbed wire around the ring. See, I'm glad to get out of that unscathed. <laughs>